Grand Rising Beloved, you have been found the your treasures of Yahweh, and I'm your sister in the end, Christ, and I hope you all are having an absolutely wonderful Sabbath day, because each day we wake up is a wonderful blessing, but this holy day of the Most High, we really just want to relax and enjoy it. So anyway, today my video is on the subject of tithing, and if we are going about it incorrectly or not and together we will discover biblically if we are i had watched this young man short and he was walking to the nearest church that he could find to pay tithe and he mentioned all the verses that people will go against him paying tithe but all he was doing was isolating those certain verses now if you've seen any of my videos on context I always suggest that you go up about three or four videos, excuse me, three or four verses or, you know, and then proceed down like three or four verses, if not reading the whole chapter, which is more beneficial. But anyway, this young man was fired up about tithing. Now, I can definitely appreciate his spunk and I'm aware that so many others feel this exact same way, but are we putting our energy in the right place, beloved? What if our idea of tithing was wrong and that we were going about it the wrong way? What if our idea or the teaching that we've been brought up on in the church was flat out incorrect? What if we're placing ourselves in a position of facing the risk of being told to depart from me? I never knew you because we partly know him. I always recommend to seek this truth out for yourself and the Bible tells you to study to show yourself approved. We know for sure that the Most High speaks against following traditions of men. So are we following traditions of our family that we were brought up in? Is our perspective about tithing incorrectly? And if it was, don't you want to know? Well, some of you may say, well, I'm still going to tithe. Because I'm helping to build up the kingdom of God. But is this the, in, the biblical inspired way to do it? Now in my life I've learned that men who supervise women of the night, if you know what I mean, they are some of the biggest tithers. They feel that although they're not even thinking about repentance nor living righteously whatsoever, that they can somehow pay some of their proceeds that the women make to the church thereby paying their way into heaven now can we bribe the most high with paper money through a money handler beloved what if there were actual biblical written instructions which could help us actually build up the most high's kingdom and tithing had nothing to do with it well at the end of this video i will give some tips on how you can help build up the kingdom and it will still be from the Bible and how we can still help build up the church monetarily, but all in biblical truth. Now we'll go over all forms of tithing and the verses used in many churches today. First one you hear is Malachi 3, 6. And it says, will a man rob God? But you have robbed me. But you say, where have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. But now, beloved, in context it reads for i am the lord i change not therefore you sons of jacob are not consumed even from the days of your fathers ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them return unto me and i will return unto you saith the lord of hosts but ye said wherein shall we return will a man rob god yet ye have robbed me but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with the curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour out you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine 
cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, the devourer is like those little insects that eat the harvest, okay? Malachi 1, 7 through 8, it reads, Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar, and ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts? Now, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 10 read, But this I say, which he would sow it sparingly, shall reap also sparingly. And he would sow it bountifully, shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for Yahuwah loveth a cheerful giver. Now he that ministered seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seeds sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. First Timothy 5.17 says, Pastors who do their work well should be paid and should be highly appreciated, especially those who work hard at both preaching and teaching. No! Now that's an off version, okay? Because King James Version reads, 1 Timothy 5, 17, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Since the first English translation of record being in 1382 by John Wycliffe, there have been numerous translations, beloved. In our home, we actually utilize the Hallelujah Scriptures or the Sefer or the King James Version because it was made before a lot of these other versions. With that being published in 1611. But let me give some history on this Living Bible which had that first translation. The Living Bible which was accurately considered as a personal paraphrase translation in English by Kenneth N. Taylor published in 1971 through Tyndale House Publishing. The same William Tyndale who injected the word Easter into scriptures. Supposedly Tyndale could not translate the original word Pascha or Passover, although he could have just simply put the Passover, but decided to inject Easter. He felt that it was a better translation for this time of year. So now everyone thinks Easter is biblical, although Easter actually stemmed from pagan roots of a goddess Ishtar or Semiramis. But anyway, that's another subject. But back to the matter at hand, that paraphrasing translation, he must have been a minister to say that pastors should get paid, okay? Because all scripture is given by inspiration of Yahuwah and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, not to lace a pastor's pockets. Many possibilities of manipulation in the church. I will only give you a few. First of all, appealing for money. Many, many preachers, pastors, evangelists, manipulate. In the church, there's also the motivation of fear and threats. The pastor says, now if you leave this church, you'll never prosper. The demand for unquestioning loyalty. I'm your pastor. You have to obey me. If you don't obey me, you're disobeying God. A lie. And I will say to you, have the guts to get out. Deuteronomy 14, 22, it reads, Thou shalt surely tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. The field, beloved. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. The tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thine oil, and the first things of thy herds and thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord God has blessed thee, then shalt thou turn it into money, and bind up the money in thine hand, and shall go into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. So then shall you turn into money. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lustest after, for oxen, 
sheep, wine, or strong drink, or whatsoever thy soul desireth, and thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, thou and thine household, and the Levite that is within thy gates, thou shalt not forsake him, for he hath no part nor inheritance with thee. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thine increase the same year, and shall lay it up within thy gates. And the Levite, because he has no part inheritance with thee, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow, which are within thy gates, shall come and shall eat and be satisfied. And the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hand which thou doest. Now we're going to go from the Old Testament to the New. Okay, beloved? Leviticus 27, 30 reads, And the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. And if a man with all redeem out of his tithes, he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof. And concerning the tithe of the herd or the flock, even whatsoever passeth under the rod, the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. Thus speaking to the Levites and saying unto them, When ye take of the children of Israel the tithes, which I have given you from them of your inheritance, then ye shall offer up a heave offering, offering it for the Lord, even a tenth part of the tithe. And this is your heave offering, shall be reckoned unto you as though it were the corn of the threshing floor, and as of the fullness of the wine press. Thus she also shall offer an heave offering unto the Lord of all your tithes, which ye receive of the children of Israel, and ye shall give therefore the Lord's heave offering to Aaron the priest. Now, do we think a heave offering is money? No, because Numbers fifteen nineteen through 21 says this, Then it shall be that when ye eat of the bread of the land, ye shall offer up a heave offering unto the Lord. Ye shall offer up a cake of the first of your dough for a heave offering. As ye do the heave offering of the threshing floor, so shall ye heave it. Of the first of your dough, not money dough, dough, food, you're making the bread, ye shall give unto the Lord and heave offering in your generations. Now Leviticus 7.32 reads, And the right shoulder shall ye give unto the priest for a heave offering of the sacrifices of your peace offering. It's not money, okay? Proverbs 11.24 reads, there is that scattereth and yet increaseth, and there is that withholdeth more than is meat, which is, means good. But it tendereth, it tendeth to poverty. So you it means giving to others. If you hold on to it, it's not going to be good. Proverbs 3, 9 through 10 reads, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Proverbs eleven twenty four reads, There is that scattereth, and yet increases in there that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. Many are going to say, you know what, those were the old writings or the Old Testament. So now we believe it to be money, right? We all know that the Most High God does not change. And the Son, Christ, does not change, all right? But let's get into the New Testament and let's see what's going on, okay? You're not supposed to be letting everybody know, I'm about to go pay tithes, you know, because all you're going to get is a human pat on the back, and that's going to be it, okay? Matthew 23 and 23, it reads, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin. Okay, these are spices. And have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment mercy and faith these ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone now mark 21 and 41 reads and yeshua sat over against the treasury now we're getting into money and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury and many that were rich cast in much 
And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples, and he said, Say it, and he saith unto them, Verily I say to you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. Okay? And he didn't say tithe, okay, because that was for the Levitical priests, if you remember. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Now, Acts 20 and 35 read, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak. And to remember the words of the Lord Yeshua, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Hosea 4, 6 reads, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. So we don't want this to happen if we're going about things wrong. Isaiah 1, 12 through 17 reads, When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbath, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hated. They are trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doing from before me. From before mine eyes, cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. So see, these are the things that we are supposed to be doing to help building up the kingdom, beloved. 1 Samuel 15, 22 through 23 read, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord his great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is, is a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So if you're being stubborn to God's word and you want to do your own thing, that's like witchcraft, beloved. So, beloved, anyway, after hearing all this biblical information and ordinances of tithing and distinguishing the difference of offering, I hope things are becoming more clear to you. Now, earlier I said that I give some insight on how to help build up the kingdom of Yahuwah straight from the word of Christ himself and also how to correctly help the church monetarily. Well, monetarily, we that frequent the church building can make offerings to help the lights stay on, okay? Help the AC work in tip-top condition and maintenance upkeep, even if that upkeep means that some of the offerings go to the overseer, the pastor. However, we have learned not by what I believe, but what Yahuwah wants, which is obedience over your sacrifice of giving some money up, okay? Or taking some money out of your area in your life where you needed it. So obedience is one way that we can help build up the kingdom. When we obey the word of the Most High, that's obedience, okay? We walk in righteousness, and yes, we may slip up, but the more you stay on watch, you will slip up less and less. Note that I said slip up, not willfully fall. If we sin willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. So in time, beloved, as you seek him in truth and begin to study outside of the church building independently as scriptures tell us to do without anyone's influence, any music, any members coming down, saying something, you begin to love all that Yah loves. You hate what he hates. You begin to seek his word. You'll begin to get a stronger relationship, okay? You may not even notice, but people around you will see the change in you and wonder what it is that is causing this change. 
and many will even ask but some will know and want what you have found now think about all the people that you may know who profess to be christian but don't act any different from non-christians right they make yah's name of nothing and usually just go along with the religious acts of church and then go back to life you know as as normal until sunday okay now furthermore do you have people in your life that you really care about a lot some you may even love right but see them going down the wrong path well christ told all his followers in mark 16 15 he said go into all go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature okay matthew 10 17 says and as ye go preaching saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand okay heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely ye have received freely ye give we're supposed to be looking out for widows orphans the fatherless okay scriptures say when you did this for one of them when you fed them when you clothed them um, when you visited them you visited me okay he says when you did it for them you did it for me and that is what we are supposed to be doing with our monetary offering we are supposed to be helping those lacking i see many people um walking past individuals sitting outside the stores like sitting at the door of 7-eleven or a&p and we walk past them okay and then we go to church on sunday and give our pastors chunkums okay and in our mind I, I, he's going to get some drugs we're not supposed to be doing that that is so hypocritical and yah is watching in addition to knowing your heart which he says is evil who can know it okay and furthermore if you if, if anyone is uh, mentioning abraham who gave tithes to malchizedek early in the scriptures in the old testament well recall and read in context Melchizedek was a priest and he was a king that's who Christ came in the order of so he resembled Melchizedek and so he actually offered Abraham some bread and wine initially and then in return Abraham gave him some tithes from what he took from the bounty of those people that took Lot so I really hope this helped you, beloved. I hope we've came to the conclusion and the truth that tithing was food. And the only time when they turned tithing in for their tithes, their harvest, their animals, okay, the things that they grew in abundance, the only time they turned it into money was that yearly time when the Most High gave them the destination of where they should go and worship Him. If the load became too heavy, they turned in some of it for money to get whatever their soul lusted after. And that doesn't mean I'm lusting after a woman, a prostitute. No. It just meant what you really wanted and, you know, you were okay to get it. But, of course, we don't stay drunkards, all right? We turn away from strong drink. But they just took advantage of that time when he told them that. So, again, beloved, the tithing was for the Levitical priests because they are who went to the Most High for the sins of the people as well as the sins for themselves. And all the tribes of Israel inherited land except for the Levitical priests who the Most High was their inheritance. And so he told the other tribes of Israel that they were supposed to look out for the Levitical priests whenever they needed anything. So we know that there are no Levitical priests now. And so we are supposed to be making offerings. Uh, the devourer was like the pests that eat your crops. All right. The storehouse. Nobody puts money in a storehouse. They go in the storehouse, exchange money for something edible. Right. Okay. And so I really hope this helped you, beloved. I hope you go to um, your church building and no disrespect to the churches but we are the temple of the most high god all right he does not dwell in those buildings we cannot buy our way to heaven if you are helping out your pastor more than you helping out that man on the street that woman on the street that orphan that widow if you're doing that you will be held accountable and you have to answer to that in judgment all right anyway i hope this video helped you i hope you are clear on things the Most High does not change, neither does Christ. If they said it yesterday, they mean it tomorrow.
They mean it next week. All right, if they said it last year, that's the same for the year after now. Okay, enjoy the rest of your Sabbath day. Blessing to you and your family. Bye.